I bought a 1952 American La France 700 and I am going to take you on a tour. I love the front, it looks like a train to me. It's really cool. Um, the bumper, the front bumper is a little bit bent. So that'll be a project. The paint is coming off here in the front. So we'll fix that. It's the whole thing is a project. It really is. So um, this is what you can expect from a 1952 truck. Both front doors are different colors, as you may or may not be able to tell in this light. So at some point they were repainted, which is kind of funny because you can really see the difference from the bottom of the door to the top of the door. Um, when we go in the cab, it's just a real two-seater cab. It's not in great condition. I'll show you on the other side. This side's all right. It needs to be cleaned out. I haven't done that part yet. I did wash the front. Let's get in. All right. So here's the steering wheel. The gauges are all original and they all still work, which is super exciting. Mentor Township, where it came from last. Now, when I was a firefighter in Pennsylvania, my favorite place to sit was in the outdoor rear facing seat. And this one has two of them, just like mine did. Now, my fire truck, it was engine one, or which was short for 141 or N241, so engine 141 had the outdoor rear facing seats and we had a door here. But I'm telling you, there's nothing better than sitting in the um, seat right here, outdoors. You wave to whomever drives by you, right? Like if there are people, you know, hi, wave. And in the snow, you're still sheltered, right? So I'm not even sitting on the chair yet. If I go all the way back to the chair, Woo, I just washed it and you can hear the water sloshing out. If I go all the way back to the chair, this is how far back I am. So my face is, I'll show you, but it's at that tree line out there at the window. So, let's see. When I sit in here, you can see it's still wet because I did just wash it. Um, but anyways, when I sit down, my face is right about here. So I'm really well shielded from the elements. You're not getting too cold or too wet, which fortunately for this crew, because this one came from Michigan. Started in uh, Michigan and ended in Michigan, and then it went to a collector, and then off to New York where I got it from. And boy, is that a story. So I'll tell you that another time. Let's see, so here's a couple of the valves. That's the bleeder valve. This is where the battery is. There's a brand new battery in there. This compartment, I'm actually not sure what this was. It's kind of interesting. So we'll get into that at some point. We'll just lock that right up. The entire bottom, I don't know if you can see very well here, the entire bottom is rusty. So it's a little bit different than what I'd expected, but that's all right. It's, I wanted a fire truck and I guess I wanted a project. So this is that, it is both in fact. Um, let's see, so these two sides were the were where we kept the hose, the firefighters kept the hose. And so what I'm thinking about actually is taking out this middle piece here and putting benches on either side, or we could do chairs for a hayride, so chairs that could come out. If we climb up here, these were the side hoses. So the firefighters, when there was a fire, they would take this hose and they would run out to the side. They would take this hose and they'd run out to the side. There's our cab that we were just sitting in the back. The hose is here. Now, depending on the hose size, five, six inches, six inches uh, is the width of the hose. It could have been a four inch hose. That would have been a bit small for back here, but maybe back in 52, that would have worked. So what they did was they would come over here, grab a hose line, pump it over their shoulder and run. So These are the gears and the gauges and supposedly they're all original, which is super duper cool. And supposedly they all still work which is lovely. Not everything on the truck works. It doesn't appear to have brakes. It doesn't appear to, the clutch doesn't really go in very well. You can see there's some damage on the seat here, so I'll have to fix the seats. It doesn't turn on, I don't think, or if it does, it doesn't drive. And I was originally thinking it would be maybe a minor problem. It's 12 years old, it's a six cylinder. It has 12 spark plugs, so maybe it's a spark plug. Maybe it's a um, an old wire. That was kind of the hope, but in fact, it seems like it may actually be a transmission issue. So stick with me. We're gonna be working on the engine, which is actually under here. It's really an amazing engine. So we have some engine work, we have some brake work, we have some transmission work. 
and we have some upholstery work. We're gonna get in here and clean it up. Oh, and check this out. So whatever's left of the owner's manual, or as I like to say, my instruction manual, we have this. Now this is 70 years old this year, 1952. So that's not too bad, right? Group four, hopefully nothing before group four was very important. Um, but here's my instruction manual. Here's the view. So if you're the driver, you're the foreman, you're the um, you're the person who controls the water, you pull up to a scene, your job is to take care of the fire engine, right? So you're gonna pop out of the truck and you're gonna come over to here and you're gonna be releasing the water and doing the math to make sure that pounds per square inch is right. And this is your station. If you're the person who sits here, that means you're the officer on duty. Or if there's multiple officers on duty, you're the first officer right there. So you're gonna, if the driver doesn't know where to go, you're gonna be navigating, you're gonna be talking. Now, back here, these windows, the ones that are cracked, they actually opened. I just closed them because, like I said, I was washing it. So maybe if it's not too loud, you could talk from driver, from inside outside cab, driver, uh, captain, or first officer to the two firefighters back here. It really does only hold four people. Um, in the more modern fire engines and the enclosed ones, of course they had headsets. And that's really nice, but this is also really fun and I do love this open area. It's my favorite. So when you're sitting in this seat, you're sitting so far back that they actually put a handle here to help you get up out of your seat. So, um, steps so you can step up step ups they're all over the engine um it's awesome it's a it's a project it's more than i was anticipating but um you know we're gonna we're gonna go for it of course and the last thing i want to show you is that although it's not the most important part like i've got the camera pointed down because right here is the siren this is the coolest siren you're ever gonna see it is a foot stepper which is not a foot pedal it's not super uncommon, um, especially for the time period. However, watch this, ready? So it's an air siren. So if you're the first uh, officer, you're sitting up here, you're looking around, you're filling out your paperwork, you're doing what you need to do, and there's people or cars, you gotta hit the siren. Here we go. <laughs> So this is it. It needs a name. I'm thinking Ruby. I'm thinking Peanut. If you have a suggestion, you have an idea, let me know what you would name it. I'm uh, still in a bit of disbelief that this is mine. Uh, I think it's really awesome. You can see it's the American La France Fomite and it's a 700. It's dimensions you might be curious about. So it is about seven and a half feet wide. In the email that I used for shipping to coordinate the shipping, I said it was eight feet wide just to be on the safe side. So I wouldn't get a trailer that was too narrow. From the ground all the way up to the top of the light there, that is nine feet. It is 25 feet long. Now there's a way to make it a lot lighter, which would of course make it easier to drive, but less useful should I ever choose to use it to perhaps water my garden or spray down the kids in the summer. So that is to take out the pump. However, as is, pump and all, without taking it out, this weighs 12,000 pounds. 
Low mileage, it's only got uh, 25,000 miles on it. So, like I said, it started in Michigan and went from one Michigan city to another. I don't actually have those in front of me right now, so I'll get you the names in case you're interested in some of the history on it. And then it stayed in a collector's garage for a number of years from the late 90s, excuse me, early 90s. It retired in the late 80s. So it ran from 1952 through the late 80s. Then it sat in a um, collector's garage for a while until the early mid 2000s and then it sat outside in New York. No, so that's if you're wondering why this is on here, this is not standard equipment. This was put on here. It actually is because this compartment doesn't close. So during transit, we didn't want this flapping open, so they um they put that band on to keep it there. So here she is, ironically. It's parked right next to our burn pile. Uh yeah. So questions, comments, leave them below, hit me up. This is great. And if you're local and you want to come check it out, I'm game. Let's schedule it. I love how these doors are a different color. It cracks me up. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. They had some work done and they did it on both sides. So it's kind of interesting 